All right, uh, one last kind of quick run through for 7.5. Um, what we're doing here is we're sort of combining our complex numbers. So that's right, our values, you know, z equals a plus bi uh, with the sort of polar coordinate system. Um, and so the connection is that if you were going to graph a, um, a complex number, you would essentially think of you would sort of treat a like an x and you would treat the b value like a y so you have in some sense a real axis which is the x-axis and an imaginary axis which is going to be uh, what our sort of y-axis is normally so so if for example I was going to graph a point like 2 minus 3i what that's going to look like is right so positive 2 and then down 1 2 3 So to kind of visually represent this, we need to do something like this. Um, what happens then is I can essentially do the same kind of right triangle maneuvers that I would have been doing before, right? So this is kind of my A value, this is my B value, this is my radius, and then our angle is sort of going around the side. So this allows us to get the same kind of, um, you know, what were our kind of X and Y and like R and theta relationships they're transposed over to uh, A and B and the radius and the angle. So now for complex number A plus B I, what we get here, right, uh, so A would equal like the radius times the cosine of the angle, B would equal the radius times the sine of the angle and then kind of the vice versa relationships going the other way right our sort of radius squared would equal a squared plus b squared and our sort of tangent of the angle would be equal to the b value divided by the a. Um, what this gives us then if I have the sort of a and b is r times the cosine and r times the sine so now a number so z equals a plus b i so this becomes r times cosine theta plus like i times the sine. Oops, I'm sorry. i times r times the sine of, say, of theta. And so you can kind of bring this r out in front and this becomes cosine theta plus i times the sine of theta. And so instead of writing a plus bi, I could write a polar version, a polar form uh, of this complex number of a plus bi. Um, you might say to yourself, that looks worse. <laughs> it looks more complicated. Uh, and you know, as far as just like, you know, I used to have a two and a three and now I have all this other stuff. Yeah, that's, that's, that's fair. That's sort of a fair thing to say. Um, let me sort of do a conversion, kind of running these back and forth, right? the same kind of uh, things that we were doing to convert in 7.3 just to do converting polar coordinates and rectangulars all those same methods still apply for us here um, so let's take a look um, let's actually convert the other direction so let's convert uh, what should we do how about 4 times cosine of uh, 150 degrees plus I times sine of 150 degrees. So to do the conversion here, there, there isn't really anything super clever to do. You're, you're kind of just going to evaluate it, and then that's that. Um, so let's convert this so into complex form uh, or maybe it's called the rectangular form I guess it would be rectangular so cosine at 150 cosine this is quadrant 2 is going to be negative so that's going to be negative root 3 over 2 right sine at 150 that would be 1 half so this is essentially 4 times right negative root 3 over 2 plus 4 times 1 half times i. This is going to write just sort of reduce down, so this is going to be 
negative 2 root 3 plus 2i. So we just kind of evaluate it, just sort of run through the arithmetic, uh, and we get our value. Um, if I wanted to convert something the other way, right, so given a particular um, complex number, if I wanted to sort of turn it into its polar version, the polar form, uh, so let's convert, uh, what should we do? How about, um, let's convert 3 root 3 minus 3i into polar form, right? So the a is this 3 root 3, my b value is just kind of regular 3. Um, what quadrant is this? A is positive, B is negative. This would be quad 4, right, if we graphed it, sort of over and down. Um, I'm not going to actually try to graph it because 3 times root 3 is a decimal value. That's sort of more awkward. Um, we can find our radius here, right? So that's going to be 3 root 3 squared plus negative 3 squared. This is 9 times 3, so this is 27 plus 3 squared is 9. So that's 36. So the R value here would be 6. Um, our angle, right, the tangent of the angle should be the B over the A. So that's going to be negative 3 over 3 root 3. So that's like negative 1 over root 3. And so what we want to do, uh, in theory, right, whenever we see these um, roots on the bottom, your sort of brain tells you right away you should rationalize it. Uh, what I'm going to say is actually don't in this case, right? So we want quad 4 where your kind of y value is 1 and your x value is, is root 3. Um, this really would kind of be like 1 half and root 3 over 2. Um, so what's the position where that happens? Well that would be sort of the 30 degree angle in quadrant 4. That would be like 330 or 11 pi over 6. Um, I'll just do our degrees here because why not? So the version of this, right, so 3 root 3 minus 3i, so this becomes our, right, radius head in front, 6, and then cosine, 330 degrees, plus i times the sine of the same angle. Those two angles on the inside should be in sync. They should be the same value. Um, that's part of what makes this work. Um, two super short formulas just to sort of finish it up. I won't do an example, but just a formula so you have it. Um, if, you, if you're going to do this, the advantage to sort of being in this form uh, really comes from multiplying and dividing. When we were doing the complex numbers, right, you're kind of doing this FOIL thing or the box method when you multiply or this conjugate stuff when you divide is, is kind of tricky. Um, I'm going to have to put this onto a different sheet just to have a little bit more space, so I will do that. So, 7.5. Uh, so this is multiply in polar form. So if I'm going to multiply two of these together in the polar form, right, so rather than having it as a plus bi and doing the FOIL kind of stuff, um, if I've got z1 is sort of radius 1 and then cosine, right, theta 1, i times sine of like theta 1. So I've got number 1, number 2, so radius 2, cosine, right, kind of angle 2, i times sine, angle 2, yada, yada, yada. So if I'm going to multiply, What happens here is z1 times z2, I'm just going to multiply the two radiuses together, radii, I guess. And then what happens is inside the trig functions, I'm going to do cosine, but I'm going to add the two angles together. So theta 1 plus theta 2 plus i times sine of the same pair, theta 1 plus theta 2. So you actually end up, right, rather than sort of doing this FOIL stuff, you kind of end up just multiplying the radius together, and then you just add the angles together. So if, if you're at, right, 60 degrees and 30 degrees, you add up to 90 on the inside, and then you can sort of evaluate from there. Um, similarly for division, right, if I'm going to do z1 divide by z2, 
you're going to do radius 1 over radius 2 times cosine of the difference, right? Theta 1 minus theta 2 plus i times sine theta 1 minus theta 2. Right, so if, what did I say? 60 degrees and 30 degrees, right, if you're doing a division now, and those are your angles, you're going to do 60 minus 30 on the inside. It's going to sort of take you to 30. Uh, and that's our form. Um, so you can use those. That's sort of syncs in a little bit with some uh, uh, applications um, that we won't sort of get, be getting into in detail. But that's kind of as far as 7.5 goes, so we'll finish there.